Hiya, my name's Mark, I run info, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to change and check a trailer bearing. Um, right, these are quite important really because the bearings are the things that make your trailer roll down the motorway or the road whenever you're wanting to move your boat. Um, it's worth checking these because if they do go, um, it can cause you a lot of problems, mostly because your wheel won't move. Um, but the other thing to note is that the breakdown recovery vehicles like the AA and the RAC, they don't actually stock the bearings with them. So it can cause a real problem if you're trying to get back from a sailing event or you're trying to move your boat or, or whatever. So it's really worth spending a bit of time and looking at these. So the thing you probably want to know, first of all, when you, um, when you check your bearing, is if you lift the trailer up and if you just spin the wheel, you might be able to hear that there's a little bit of play in there and it shouldn't really have any at all. So I'm just going to check this one. So the first thing you need to do is crack the wheel nuts off. Um, the problem is, is they're generally torqued, they should be torqued up to about 65 newton meters using a torque wrench so they're normally quite quite tight so what you want to do is wedge the wheel up against something and just just try and crack them off that's with the trailer on the ground without a boat on it is what i'd recommend um, so once we've done that if we get that out of the way we're then going to want to get the wheel or trailer even up in the air so I'm just going to use a toolbox hopefully I don't need anything out of it otherwise it would be a bit embarrassing so next thing you're going to want to do is take off the wheel this bit can take a bit of time just because the um, wheel nuts can get a bit a bit stuck sometimes so let's just see a bit of luck they'll all come a bit loose Ugh. as you can see I don't think this one's been done for a while Probably at this point, a good thing to note, it's probably worth buying some gloves. I'd buy a box of them if I was you, because you never know when you're going to need them again. So stop your hands getting mucky, because this is quite a mucky job. Ugh. Maybe buy some um, nitrile ones rather than these ones, because they're a bit easier to put on and they also protect your hands better. Right. My goodness, these are welded on. As I say, it's probably better to do this now rather than on the side of a motorway when you're trying to get home from somewhere. Because as you can see, it's quite an involved process really. Still stuck. So keep on spinning it around and see what happens. As I say, all the um, wheel bearings are different so I would always recommend carrying a spare set of wheel bearings at least with you for both sides um, because they are all different they um, and the AA and the RAC don't carry them it's worth doing this all in advance 
Probably also a good opportunity for you to check your wheel, your tire as well, because the last thing you want is one of those blowing up on you. And being that they sit in, they tend to just sit in dinghy parks, these trailers, and sometimes not move for quite a while, the last thing you'd want is to lose them. So you probably want to check that there's still some tread on them, so there's still a bit of tread on there. And then also check the actual walls and make sure there's no cracking or anything like that going on. Um, probably not a bad idea to change this really as the hub's starting to get a bit rusty. So anyway, we have said hub. So this is the part that spins. Um, quite important, quite often you'll find if the hub's gone, the, um, the grease seal at the back here can be leaking out a load of grease. So it's probably worth checking that. That's a good indication of whether it's about to go or not. So we have this dust cap here, so I'm just gonna, gonna see if I can get that off. So just using a flat-headed screwdriver and a hammer. And you see it's just starting to pop off like so. So there we go. So you can see there's, there's a nice bit of grease. Actually doesn't look too bad, but let's open it up and have a look. So what you have is a split pin that goes through a castle nut. So there's various different ways of doing this, but using a flathead, a combination of a flathead screwdriver seems to do the trick but a pair of long nose pliers is also really handy so basically all we're trying to do at this point is straighten it out so that you can pull the pin out so just need to straighten out a little bit more and with a bit of luck It'll come free. So yeah, lots of use of a hammer and various other techniques, basically whatever it takes to get it out. So there we go, there's one split pin. And then if I use a bit of the rag, which I've got here, I can just clean it all up a little bit. Probably pays to be a bit more organized than I am just at the moment. But we have what's called a castle nut. These do tend to wear a bit. So it's probably worth replacing, really. If you haven't done this for a while, you might wanna, might wanna do it. So you have this castle nut, so when the nut's tightened up to stop the nut from moving, the pin goes through and sits in these grooves. So I'll put that away. One of the good things about this axle is there's a couple of, there's actually four holes being drilled through the middle, which actually allows, allows a lot more tuning for when you actually um, put the wheel back on, which is important. So the next bit in the hub is this washer here. So you just need to prise that out, just like so. So got a washer, then what you'll find is the whole hub will come off like so. And bizarrely enough, actually, the inner bearing has come out. So this is the entire hub. So this is the actual bearing, this is the bit that moves. So this is the crucial, important bit. And the thing you wanna do is go along to one of your, one of your um, local trailer manufacturers. Ideally, I'd take these with you. And the important thing here is this number that's on the back because every single one is different. So it's important that you have the correct, the correct bearing for your trailer. So put that to one side and I'll cleaned it up. 
so this is the actual hub um, on this particular hub there is no grease nipples so you have to pack it with grease yourself manually as I say these um, the back the back um, the back wheel bearing has a rubber has has a rubber rubber grommet on it this is a new one um, which is what this should be and as you can see that's perished quite a bit and this is the thing that stops grease from coming outside so it's really important to check and change it so let's just see if I can get this out as you can see not the sort of thing you'd really want to be doing at the side of a road so um, worth spending a weekend or a day just sorting it all out if you're planning to go go traveling traveling around to different sailing events or you've got other other plans all right let's just see I might just be able to knock this out um, As you can see, quite tricky, but um, but essentially, I would just knock this out as best you can. Let's just see if it'll come through with the hammer. And as you can see, pretty pretty well glued in there. Um, I think for the minute, I'll call it a day. So what I'd do now is I'd take take this lot to my local trailer supplier and see if I can get a new hub and a new bearing super um, so I'll put this back together in parts two